Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Thursday, May 17th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkoy. And we are joined here in the studio by our wonderful editorial assistant, Eric King. Hello. And we have an incredible guest Amazing for you today. guest today, guys. Who's joining us? We have Carrie Butler here from Mean Girls. Woo! Ooh, yes. So excited to talk yes. to Carrie. One of my very favorites. I'm very excited oh in one of my favorite shows. But first, let's get to today's top five. Okay, everybody, the polls are closed. The <laughs> votes have been tallied. No Russian meddling. <laughs> No hanging chads. The Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards winners are here. They yes, are. guys. Are you ready for this? So appropriately, with Carrie Butler here today, Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards are led by Mean Girls with eight wins. Eight wins. Eight wins for Mean All Girls. All over the yeah. place, Mean yes. Girls love. Sweet. So love that. Um, Ethan Slater uh, has two wins, SpongeBob SquarePants star. And, uh, God, who else? Include Haley Kilgore. Haley Kilgore is a winner. Leading actress in a musical. Uh, Barrett Wilbert Weed from Mean Girls has mm -hmm. three wins, the most of Great. any performer. Uh, yeah, so Gray Henson's got list, a couple. Gray, Gray Henson. <laughs> it's a yes. lot of And your favorite new song, there. I'd Rather Be Me from Mean Girls. Yes. But then, of course, Angels in America was honored. And yep. then Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, yeah. You, favorite you, tour was? Favorite tour, Hamilton broke Hamilton. the Wicked streak since 2011. Oh my Wicked goodness. has won every year. And Hamilton, came, and then Dear Evan Hansen for Long Running Show. Yes. You guys had made your voices heard. And look at well that. Well done, guys. Well done. Check out the full list on the site. Yes, go check it out. Okay, not a day goes by. We don't miss a certain Sondheim musical, <laughs> but now it's coming back. <laughs> yeah, so this is super exciting. Merrily We Roll Along, an incredible musical. George Firth and Stephen Sondheim, uh, their 1981 Broadway musical, Fiasco Theater, which is this really cool theater group. They've done um, like different interpretations of musicals. What did they do recently? Into the um, Woods. Into the Woods. Like Twelfth um, Night. Twelfth Night. I think Measure for Measure yeah, recently. They've done yeah, they some Shakespeare, some musical. Right. They mix it up. Yeah. They, they, they really like do interesting interesting takes on these musicals. So they're going to be doing this one off-Broadway. It's through Roundabout Theater. It's going to their off-Broadway theater, the Laura Pels Theater. Um, and this will begin January 12th, and it will open on February 19th. Um, the Fiasco Theater's co-artistic director, Noah Brody, will direct. And then musical arrangements. This is really cool. Alexander Gemignani, Tony nominee for Carousel. He's going to be doing the music orchestrations for this. And then choreography by Lauren Lataro, waitress choreographer, is doing the choreography as well. We don't know the full cast or the creative team members yet. We will know that soon. But very, very interested very in this. Very interesting. Yeah. I know that you are a big fan yes, recently. Yes, big fan of Merrill. Well, actually, casting-wise, so four of the ensemble members of Fiasco are going to appear in the production right. with additional casting to come. But this is kind of unexpected and cool. Yeah. Yeah. because uh, there was a really wonderful Olivier winning production in London that right. a lot of folks thought was going to arrive in New York. Right, was going to make the move. Um, but what a pleasant surprise this is because Fiasco does such wonderful work. Exactly. And they recently did Merrily for an Encore's presentation yes, recently, too. 2012. Right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm excited to see what Fiasco does Super with this. Super pumped about it. And there's a certain movie-turned-musical that's also headed off-Broadway. Indeed. So, Secret Life of Bees, which was this fantastic 2008 film right. and a novel by Sue Monk Kidd, is going to receive a musical adaptation. And this has been something that's been yes, it's been well, workshops we've heard and, about and it readings for, while, for the yeah. past few years. It's going to arrive at the Atlantic Theater Company in 2019. Okay. Um, this creative team is pretty incredible. It's so, nuts. it has a book by Lynn Nottage, two-time Pulitzer winner, Amazing. Duncan Sheik. Has, wrote the oh. music and lyrics by Susan Birkenhead uh, and directed by Sam Gold. That's amazing. So this what is a team. Really incredible. So this is going to run from May 10th through June 23rd, 2019 at the Atlantic. And the Atlantic, as we all know, was the birthing ground for the band's visit, which is That's a big right. hit on Broadway now. Absolutely. I'm yeah. excited to see this. Yes. Well. Good so stuff coming. Indeed, casting to come. But right. worth noting that a 2017 workshop production starred Uzo Aduba and Sophia Ann Caruso. That would be, that would be amazing. Yes. 
we'll see. So look out for that. Um, there's an off-Broadway extension as well that has us singing the blues yes. in a good way. <laughs> I like that. Singing, singing the blues of Paradise. Paradise <laughs> Blue at Pershing Square Signature Center has extended for the second time. It was originally going to close on June 10th, but now you have until June 17th to see it. If you have not yet, of course, the Dear Evan Hansen star Crystal and Lloyd is in this production as well as J. Alphonse Nicholson. Um, Tony winner Ruben Santos Iago Hudson directs this production. Um, it, it follows a troubled club owner in gentrifying 1949 Detroit. I have not seen it yet, but I've heard fantastic things about it. Now I actually have an extra week to go see it as Look well, which I will be taking advantage of. Yes. Congrats to over there. Yes, and um, it is a big day for Dear Evan Hansen alums yes. because yes. one of them is going to be leading the Dear Evan Hansen tour. Yes. yes, so we found out today that Ben Levi Ross, who is an understudy in the Broadway production of Dear Evan Hansen, is going to take on the title role yeah. in the national tour of the Tony winning musical. It's a huge deal. Big deal. Yeah. So exciting. I, I have not seen him on stage, but I hear he's super right. talented. Right, and he like made his Broadway debut doing Connor, Jared, and Evan. Yes. Right? Yeah, so covering for all of them. But yeah, yeah, so that tour is going to kick off in October of this year at the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. And then, yeah, they're hitting 50 cities, over 50 wow. cities across the country. Such a huge deal. Congratulations to Ben. He's yes. super talented. This is so cool. Um, you're all in for a treat when you go see the Dear Evan Hansen tour. And I can't wait, can't wait to hear about the rest of the casting. Yes, and yeah, more yes. of that will be announced soon, of course, and we'll have lots of stuff to cover about that. Andy, thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for doing the news with me. Such you a bet, pleasure. Man. Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about today's special guest? I'd love to. Okay. Carrie Butler has been spotted on the Great White Way in shows like Xanadu, Beauty and the Beast, Les Mis, Catch Me If You Can, Hairspray, Little Shop, Rock of Ages, and many more. You may have also seen the Tony nominee on the small screen in turns on Gilmore Girls, The Mindy Project, and 30 Rock. She's a triple threat in entertainment and in Mean Girls on Broadway, playing Miss Norbury, Mrs. George, and Mrs. Heron. Please welcome Ryan and Carrie. Hello, Carrie. Hello. It's so good to see you. Great to be here. First of all, it's so exciting to have you on here on the day it was announced. Mean Girls, the big winner of the Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. Eight wins for you guys over there at the August Wilson. How does that feel to know that the audience members, of course, are loving, loving, loving the show? Um, it's so exciting. I mean, I didn't really have many doubts because right. I could just tell <laughs> how much the fans love it. The stage door is crazy. Mm. Um, we're constantly getting schmackeries. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's how you can always tell when the people are just sending yes. the cookies over <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, and we're constantly getting pictures and, you know, all different artwork. So, mm -hmm. so it's fun. It's fun to be in a hit where I don't have to beg people to buy tickets. <laughs> totally. And it's just so nice to know that, like, especially with audience members choosing the winners of this, to know that... You know that it real the people that are seeing it are loving it and yeah. are going back to see it again and they want it rewarded in such a way. But how did you? I mean, first of all, I would love to know how you got involved in Mean Girls, but also did you foresee at that time like, wow, this is going to be a big hit for all of us? Um, well, it's funny. I've been friends with Tina forever, right. Tina and Jeff, and um, they were having auditions and they didn't bring me in. Where they asked for me and my agents were like, no, she's not coming in without telling me. And so then um, <laughs> I found out later from Nell, we were like at a bar and she's like, I understand why you don't want to come in. Because they did the workshop and the person who did the workshop couldn't do it. Right. Something, and so she's like, but you know, we understand why you don't want to come in. And I was like, wait, what? I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she said, you know, Tina didn't want to like overstep your friendship and you know, because she wanted to respect you. That you and so, so then I, I and Casey only um, auditions people he doesn't know. Right. Because I've right. never worked with them before. So I, I, I said, of course I'll audition. So I auditioned and um, and it went great. And then, you know, anyway, here I am. Now, um, I feel like at the first time, so everyone had already done it. Mm -hmm. They'd already done the workshop. And so pretty, within a week, we were doing a run through. Right, <laughs> And right. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm playing three roles here. <laughs> I'm just trying to find my characters. <laughs> Um, but so that first run through, I, I sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And Casey, what oh. Casey did with it, just because, you know, we had the moving desk, the moving chairs right. in that rehearsal. And I was just blown away. And I feel like um, you can't even see the work Casey has done because it's mm. so seamless. But it, Tina wrote it like a movie. And he had a really hard job to right. do all of those fast cuts to 
It, he was yeah. so imaginative and creative with his directing. And when you get involved in such an already beloved property like Mean Girls was, like, yeah, there's a whole different added pressure of really wanting to get everything right and wanting to transfer it well. Well, you've done, all of you have done an incredible job. As you mentioned, you play three different characters. You play Katie's mom, yes. you play Regina's mom, and of course you play the role Tina played in the movie, Miss mm -hmm. Norbury. Is there a role, is there one of those that you are, are drawn to the most, that you enjoy playing the most, or is yeah, it? Yeah, I like playing Miss George the most. Really? Just because you could do anything with her. You know, she's so funny. She comes in, like bam, usually, hopefully the audience is really laughing and going along with her, mm -hmm. and then she leaves, and, and right. she gets like these great laughs, and then just goes back to her dressing room paints. Right. <laughs> and do you enjoy sort of being like the big sister role there um, at the theater? Yeah, I love it. I was worried at first, um, you know, going out of town with everybody. I was like, oh my gosh, is anyone going to want to hang out with me? <laughs> we're going to be out of town together. Meanwhile, they were probably all freaking out like, Carrie they were, they were, Like Erica started crying the first of day course. of rehearsal. Yeah. And, and they were like, we just, and Ashley, like we listen to you all the time. Oh. You, you we are such big fans of yours. And, um, I don't know if you heard this story, but so our opening night in D.C. was um, Halloween. Okay, right, yes. And yeah, yeah. Um, all the girls, I, I, I was hanging out with them all the time, and I was like, oh, what are you going to wear to our opening night party? Or it wasn't our opening night party, it was our first preview. Mm -hmm. And there, she was like, oh, um, we're just doing a thing. And so I'm like, Oh, okay. Looping, they're not including me. They're not me. In looping me in. <laughs> no, I'm not a cool kid. <laughs> and Erica was like, no, 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 you'll like it. You'll like it. I was like, okay. And so then uh, they came to the party and they were all dressed as me Amazing. from different shows I've Amazing. done. And they had like little signs, like one of them was dressed as a bell, one was from Catch If You Can. Mm, I love it. it. So cute. Yes. Speaking of, like you have been, you have been a part of my entire like theater journey. The very first Broadway show I ever saw was Beauty and the Beast. Oh and my gosh. And you were my bell. No way, really? Absolutely. And then I caught the final performance of Bat Boy on December 2nd, 2001. It was my birthday. Hi. And I caught that final performance and my favorite musical of all time is Hairspray. Oh. So you have just been, you've you've charted the whole path for me, Carrie Excellent. Butler. <laughs> is there one of those, is there one of those shows, first of all, actually, would would you be interested in doing Bat Boy, like playing the mother, Meredith, or They're is doing there, that. Are, really? Yeah, we did a workshop of it, and um, I was playing the mother. <laughs> um, <laughs> dreams are just coming true. Yeah. But, I mean, there was such it a might following. Uh, the timing was really rough for Bat Boy. But, yes, we were just building momentum when 9-11 happened, and we right. were right across the street from the memorial. Right, Union Square, yeah. yeah. And no one wanted to go down there. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like if that didn't happen, we probably would have maybe mm -hmm. transferred to Broadway then. Right. There was so much buzz around it. Is there Are there other shows that you've done that you would like to go back and do like a different role from? Yes. Or? My first show was Blood Brothers, mm -hmm. and I understudied I never got to go on. Oh, and no. so I would love to play any part in that, except maybe Mrs. Johnston. Do you know that show? I do. A little bit, yes. Yeah. No, I, no, Miss Johnston I would want to play. I would, wouldn't want to play the mother who like um, takes the son. Right, yes, yes. No. yeah. The, the mean mom. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and that now that you're, so with Mean Girls, what are you, what are you really looking forward to right now? I mean, you must be, you're all getting ready for the Tony Awards, mm -hmm. of course. Yes, we just um, had a rehearsal today. Did you? So, yes. what, so what are you, what's, what are you enjoying most about it right now? Just really settling into it and welcoming everyone, the stage Door, like, yeah, I think that right uh, I think for sure settling in because there were so many changes. We were working so hard, right? Tina and and all of them, you know, like from DC to New York, we have five new songs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the, the songs that they cut were actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just had constant changes. So it's nice to settle in. It's nice to find our groove and and. Um, the audiences have been great. So it's really fun. It's fun that we constantly have like celebrities every night. Yeah, absolutely. Carol Burnett was there yesterday. Oh God, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And now you've gotten the album comes out digitally tomorrow. tomorrow. I think you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube right no, now. No, no, I think they took that down. Oh, did they? Well, if you <laughs> I didn't, think that lasted for you 20 didn't minutes. get a chance. <laughs> I used up all of the 20 minutes that I apologize to everyone. But yes, midnight tonight, you'll get to you'll get started. And you uh, you share your dressing roommate is Barrett Wilbert Weed. Yes. How what's it like sharing a dressing room with Barrett? It's who's so great. We the get along. Of so many yes. Broadway.com audience. Choices. We get along great. Our room is like the calm room. Mm -hmm. But the main perk of sharing my dressing room with Barrett is that she is so popular on social media that we get tons of free stuff for our room. <laughs> 
like totally being decorated. We just got wallpaper. We got free chairs. Look it's, at that. Our room is going to be. Yeah. There's a lot of politics into picking that dress. <laughs> so you guys have won out. <laughs> Eric, what are the, um, we have people watching and yes. following along. What would they like to know from okay. Carrie? Alec would like to know, what is it like playing the character that Tina Fey played in the movie? Um, is there any added pressure? I feel like there was added pressure um, in the beginning, not because of what you would think, mostly because I'm friends with Tina. Right. And so more than like Tina Fey, I was like, oh, I don't want to let down my friend. You know, this is our first Broadway show. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that was the main pressure. No one ever told me I had to act like her. I didn't even really think that I was particularly acting like her until we were in DC and, and people said, oh, you're actually freaking people out because people think it's Tina on stage. Really? They had to change my what wig. I know. They had to change my wig to make me look less like Tina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even think about, like, throughout this process, what is it like for you as her friend to be able to see her, like, take on a world that you were so, like, intimately familiar with and, and then just, like, the success she's had with it? Has it been cool having that seat, front row seat to Yeah, to see it's it? nice just how humble she came mm -hmm. into the process and you know she's like huge in every capacity right. of entertainment and she came in there you know she doesn't overstep her boundaries she lets the director be the leader she worked so hard she really really wanted to make this the best it could possibly be yeah well flying and colors is, and is so kind and nice our first day of rehearsal she put up the four agreements Oh, you know, yeah, that looks yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. it's about to get real. Just right. be nice to each other. Like, no one does that. <laughs> yeah, in that video of her, like, greeting guests in the lobby of the theater, and, like, she's oh, getting yeah, emotional, and they're, yeah. like, you can just tell what a genuine Yeah, she spirit. loves Broadway. So yeah. this is a dream come true for her. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Pablo would like to know, what was your first Mean Girls audition song? Which, uh, which character did you start with? Or? You know what? I don't think I had to sing. Okay. <laughs> I think I just did a lot of scenes. Mm. They gave me like 17 pages wow. yeah. to do. And so I just had to do different scenes from each character. Wow. That's, and did you know that they would be played by the same actress at that yes. point? Okay. Okay. Someone else would like to know, uh, what was it like you were in Catch Me If You Can and you sang the amazing song, Fly, Fly Away. Mm -hmm. What was that like to sing every night? Oh, it was definitely one of the highlights of my career. It's like one of my all-time favorite songs that I've ever mm -hmm. sung. And, um, you know, it just feels like you're flying in that, and you get lost in that moment when you just have the, your signature song. Like, right. I'd Rather Be Me Now is going to be Barrett's. Mm -hmm. um, I, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> and also, but also like Xanadu, like there, yes. I mean, what moments you had in there. The, 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 the Xanadu was much more stressful. Right, I mean, the skits. <laughs> I just, you know, it, Xanadu was a really fun, fun show and the audience yeah. loved it. But for me, like roller skating and doing the accent and constantly worrying that I was going to die if I hit a pebble on stage. <laughs> it was very stressful. <laughs> I can imagine. No. Um, so I want to know, you have so many quick changes in the show because yeah. obviously you're swapping characters. And I know you go on Instagram and you yeah, do Yeah, I those. posted my quick change. Right. So how do you, have there been any like, any screw ups or any like things you ever like get snagged on? Um, definitely not here. Um, in DC, in DC sometimes, uh, things were forgotten and then mm -hmm. it's like oh my god where's her clothes but I think I think I just put on like different pants and it still worked for Miss George uh but yeah yeah we have it down to a science now Love so it. knock on <laughs> and I know that you've talked about how like performing was always going to be the thing that you did like you just knew right away and, like, yeah. did, and did you meet your husband doing Bye Bye Birdie together we as did well? we were in high school together right, and I was Kim he was right. Hugo that, so yeah. I mean you always knew what you were going to do this but what do you have like now and now that you've got a cast where you, a lot of young people making their you know Broadway debuts and all that what's the the advice you have for young people that want to get involved in this world? I think, um, so I've been doing it professionally since I was nine, and I had so many people tell me I would never make it. Really? Agents, casting directors tell me I was terrible, and I just okay. constantly, I didn't let it like um, stop me, I just made it, I made myself work harder. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I took acting classes, every kind of technique you could imagine. You know, I, I try, I've been taking dance classes my whole life that did not work, but <laughs> you can still make it without dancing. <laughs> I love it. I am proof. Um, 
But, you know, I still tried. Yeah, And I'm yeah. dancing, and me girls, one, a choreographer friend of mine came to the show and was like, Carrie, you are dancing up there. I was like, okay, do you think so? <laughs> and Casey Nicola choreography is a beast. Yeah, so yeah. if you can survive I still that. sometimes practice, because um, I'm, I'm mainly, I only dance really in the finale. Right. And before the finale, I'll run my steps still <laughs> before I go on stage. That's adorable. I love it. <laughs> Okay, Joy would like to know, uh, what is your favorite part to listen to the show backstage? Mm. Hmm. Oh. oh, you know what it is, actually? It's um, the duet between Katie and Aaron. Oh, Four right. is always better. I love, I love yeah. their harmony. I just think it's such a sweet moment in the show. And Barrett and I always harmonize to it in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. We have to see some of that on the vlog. You'll have to. I'll Erica tell her. I'll tell her today. <laughs> Maybe today. Exactly. <laughs> And I oh think we God. have time for one more question. Yeah, we can do one more. Let me uh, let me choose like a really good one. Okay. Do, 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 do. Hmm. What was what was the moment you realized you wanted to become an actor? What was that uh, uh, turning point for you? Um, I saw Annie when I was nine. S seeing Annie, that's the breakthrough for a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I knew that I wanted to do it. And then I um, I auditioned. Like I went after school in my Catholic school uniform. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of me that my parents have, you know, like in an album in like the New York Times, waiting on the open call. And I did it. I went and made it to the final callbacks. Didn't get it. And then I auditioned for the movie, and um, one day I came home, and there was this message on my answering machine, yes, you've been cast as one of the orphans in the Annie movie, and me and my family were like screaming and jumping up and down, and then there was another message, beep, please disregard that last message, we dialed the wrong number. <gasps> what? That's awful. Yeah, nine. Ouch. But So it set me up for a life of rejection. That's awful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it all worked out, thankfully, for yeah. you and for all of us. In your face, <laughs> Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, thank you so much for having me. You're on social media. Where where yes. would you like everyone to follow you? Um, keep on I'm track? on Instagram. I'm Carrie Butler one, I think, and on mm -hmm. Twitter, I'm Carrie Butler NYC. Look at that. <laughs> Just to make it confusing. So my, my <laughs> but congratulations again on all of the Broadway.com Audience Source Award thank wins. You. Thanks, break everybody. A, break a leg at the Tony Awards. Good luck with all that. Thank and yes, you. go see Mean Girls, the musical, at the August Wilson Theater. Carrie Butler and that incredible cast. Thank you again so much. Please thank come you. visit anytime sure. you'd like. And Eric, why don't you take us out? Sure thing. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can watch Live at 5 every single weekday, 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you like podcasts or you want a different way to consume this show, you can subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts at Live at 5. Tune in tomorrow as we hang out with another amazing guest. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye, everyone.